All right guys, Dominic here for Kit Guru, and today we are back with our first RTX 50 series partner card review. We're checking out MSI's RTX 5090 Supreme SoC, a beast of a graphics card in every sense of the word. Not only does it boast a quad slot cooler that's about 36 centimeters long, but it's been aggressively factory overclocked while also featuring dual BIOS, 300 millimeter fans, and plentiful RGB lighting. Let's dive in then and see exactly how well it compares up against Nvidia's Founders Edition in this review. Before we do get into the review itself though, we do need to talk about one thing, pricing, and that's because it is a massive issue for all RTX 50 series GPUs right now. So I reached out to MSI and they didn't actually disclose to us an official MSRP for the 5090 Supreme SoC, but looking on Curry's, it's currently listed for £2,600 and it's even more expensive at OC UK. Needless to say, that is some extreme pricing with a £660 price premium over the £1,939 MSRP that the RTX 5090 Founders Edition is meant to retail for. Now, it is hard to say if those are just inflated figures considering there's literally zero stock of the RTX 50 right now, so I would hope that pricing will fall over time to more sensible levels as supply does increase but this is really all we have to go on right now, so this is definitely going to be factored into the conclusion at the end of our review. Back to the RTX 5090 Supreme SoC itself, however, this graphics card looks pretty similar to previous iterations of the Supreme family that we reviewed in previous years. That means we find a slightly angular, almost blocky aesthetic with the shroud being made using a combination of rigid plastic and some brushed metal sections. Now it is definitely a good looking card though, it doesn't quite excite me like one of Sapphire's Nitro Plus range, but it is at least very well built. MSI is using what it calls the Hyper Froser Thermal Design here, and that includes three Stormforce fans, each of which measures 100mm in diameter. We just cannot go any further in this review though without mentioning the sheer size of this graphics card. It is easily the biggest one I have ever used, let alone reviewed. Official dimensions measure in at 359 by 150 by 76 millimeters, so it's a quad slot card and that is just bonkers. On top of that, it weighed in at 2,841 grams on my scales, nearly three kilos. I filmed some B-roll just comparing it against the RTX 5090 Founders Edition here, and boy does it make the FE look like an absolute toy. Now, to help prevent any sag, MSI does also include this fairly basic yet effective support stand, and you can just use it to prop up the end of the card. As for the front side of the card, this is home to the GeForce RTX and the Supreme branding, the latter of which acts as one of the card's RGB zones. As for the backplate, MSI has opted for a single piece of metal that extends about three quarters the length of the card, and the rest is left open to act as a flow through area, so air can pass directly through the heatsink to help cooling performance. A dual BIOS switch is also positioned on the back of the card, offering a choice of the gaming or silent modes. Now, the silent mode has a TGP of 575 watts and a rated clock speed of 2512 MHz, whereas the gaming mode increases power to 600 watts with a rated clock speed of 2565 MHz. Do rest assured, however, I will be testing both BIOS modes in this review. Positioned at the end of the card, kind of straddling the corner, we also find the MSI Supreme logo, and this is another of the RGB zones, while the final RGB zone is a pair of LED strips either side of the central fan and here you can see the card lit up in all of its glory and of course MSI uses its MSI center software to control the lighting. Power is of course supplied by a single 12 volt 2x6 connector though MSI does include a quad 8 pin adapter in the box. Display outputs consist of three DisplayPort 2.1 and one HDMI 2.1 connectors. As for disassembly, the first step is actually to remove the backplate, and this reveals the back of the PCB. You can really see just how much flow through space MSI has built into the card. The PCB extends about only 22 centimeters, leaving nearly 14 centimeters dedicated to unobstructed airflow. Then we get a look at the PCB itself. It is very densely packed with no less than 22 phases for the GPU and seven for the memory. Monolithic power systems MP87993 MOSFETs are used throughout and these are rated at 50 amps. I can only see one controller on the PCB as well, which is the monolithic MP29816A. So it would seem that this is used for both the GPU and memory VRMs. 
As for the cooler, MSI is using a huge heatsink array here, while the GPU and VRAM contacts with a vapor chamber. Secondary base plates are also used to cool the MOSFETs. We can also see that the heatsink has a total of 11 heat pipes, and MSI say these have been designed with a square-shaped contact area to help improve overall cooling efficiency. In case you're wondering as well, MSI has opted for what appears to be standard thermal paste, unlike the RTX 5090 Founders Edition, which uses liquid metal. As for our testing today then, here we are using our brand new GPU test system for 2025. Now while this system is powered by MSI, please rest assured this review is not sponsored in any way, we're just giving our honest, unbiased feedback. As for the testament itself though, this is based on the AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D and that's paired with the MSI MPG X870E carbon Wi-Fi motherboard and we've also got 64 gigs of Kingston Fury Beast DDR5 6000 CL30. All testing was done using the MSI MPG321 URX QD OLED monitor. MSI did also send us a couple of their new PCIe 5 power supplies for this review. Now our test system already has the AI1300P, so I didn't end up using these power supplies today, but I will be sending them off to our editor-in-chief, Alan, for an in-depth analysis. Starting things off then with the out-of-the-box thermal performance, things are absolutely no problem for the Supreme. Starting out with the silent BIOS, the GPU ran just 2 degrees hotter than the founder's edition, but the VRAM actually saw a 10 degree reduction in temperature, which is very good going. You'll of course get even better thermals from the gaming BIOS, though it does run with a more aggressive fan speed, though that results in a GPU temperature of just under 63 degrees, while the VRAM topped out at 68 degrees. Now, the good news is that both BIOS modes actually run quieter than NVIDIA's Founders Edition. The gaming BIOS saw the fans run at 1640 RPM and that produced 38 decibels on my sound meter. The silent BIOS, meanwhile, runs the fans at just 1100 RPM, producing a whisper quiet 33 decibel reading, only just above the noise floor of my testing environment, so it is very quiet indeed. As a final test, we increase fan speed until we hit 40 decibels output and then rerun the thermal tests for our noise normalized results. We can clearly see that the Supreme SoC is a more efficient cooler design than the Founders Edition, with the GPU hitting just 61 degrees while VRAM peaked at 66 degrees. Now, of course, we would expect this given the sheer size differences, but the proof is in the pudding, as they say. For our game benchmarks then, I opted to use the gaming BIOS, and here we're looking at three games all tested at maxed out image quality settings using 4K resolution. Now, I don't focus too heavily on the game benchmarks in our partner card reviews, as performance doesn't tend to change a whole lot when compared to the reference models. With that said though, the gains made by the Supreme were larger than expected, coming in between 4 to 7% faster than the Founders Edition when tested with this gaming BIOS. Now, it's still not a huge difference, and I'm really not sure you'd actually be able to notice in the real world if you had both cards side by side, but it's definitely more than nothing. Now, the reason for this extra performance is that MSI has pushed clock speed fairly high, at least compared to the FE. The gaming BIOS ran at just below 2800 MHz for most of our 30-minute stress test, though the silent BIOS does run a good chunk slower and is fairly closely matched to the Founders Edition. Averaged over that 30 minute run though, the gaming BIOS hit 2774 MHz, which is about 140 MHz faster than the 5090 FE, while the silent BIOS was just under 20 MHz faster than Nvidia's model. Power draw has increased for the Supreme SoC though, at least when using the gaming BIOS. Here we saw an average result of 606.5 watts when running a Plague Tale Requiem at 4K, which is the game where we saw the highest power draw in our day one RTX 5090 review. And that means the MSI card is pulling about 6% more juice than the Founders Edition. Despite that increased power draw, general efficiency is actually on par with the 5090FE, given the Supreme SoC also runs faster, so the differences effectively cancel themselves out. Of course, I did also try my hand at overclocking, and here we used MSI Afterburner. Our best result came with the memory slider maxed out at plus 2000 MHz, bringing effective speeds up to 33.2 gigabits per second. My best GPU result came with a plus 215 MHz offset, and this brought real-world frequency to just over 3 GHz. While that all sounds well and good on paper, in the real world it didn't really net us much extra performance, we're talking just 3% gains in both Cyberpunk and a Plague Tale Requiem, though we did see a 4.5% gain in Hellblade 2. 
Considering the power slider was already maxed out at 600 watts, it also didn't increase much beyond the stock figure, coming in at just under 612 watts of power draw when overclocked, and that still sounds absolutely nuts, just to say out loud. If you're looking for a new chair, then definitely go and check out Boolies.co.uk. They offer a whole host of gaming and office chairs that come in a variety of different finishes and different colours. That brings us to the end of this graphics card review then, and there is no doubt about it, the Supreme SoC is a very, very good graphics card. I'm going to do things a little bit differently in this conclusion, however, and I'm not going to recap all of the positives for this card. If you want to go back, use the chapters down in the description, you can kind of skip to the areas you want to go to. Instead, we're going to talk about perhaps the most eyebrow-raising part of this graphics card, and that is pricing. That's because right now it's currently listed for £2,600 on Currys, and like we said at the start of the video, it is even more at OC UK. I did actually ask MSI if they had an official MSRP, and they just didn't give me one. Now, I would like to think that the current prices are inflated due to the lack of stock. After all, cards were almost non-existent on launch day, and we've seen just how bad things have got in terms of scalping. So again, I really would hope that prices are only higher just to reflect the lack of supply, and it's fair to say it's not just MSI with such exorbitant pricing. However, if pricing does persist at this level, it really would just seem absolutely crazy to me. I mean, I get this is a good graphics card, but is it really £660 better than the Founders Edition, a 31% price premium? Of course, there is no denying that some enthusiasts do have very deep pockets, but even so, £2,600 for a single graphics card, that is just a vast amount of money, especially for one that we were told was meant to cost under two grand, as opposed to closer to three. All of that then does make concluding this review pretty complicated. I could on one hand understand if the pricing was more like £2,200, that would mean the Supreme SoC had about a £250 or 13% price premium over the Founders Edition, and I think you could argue that is very justified considering the enhanced cooling, dual BIOS, the factory overclock, the RGB lighting, and so on. At £2,600, however, I would honestly struggle to recommend any graphics card, no matter how good it is, considering just how much of a premium this is over the baseline MSRP, and I really have to hope that this situation will improve as stock levels increase. Anyway guys, that is where I'm going to leave this video. If you liked it, please do toss me a thumbs up, and as always, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to ding that notification bell so you don't miss when we upload a new video. If you want to carry on the conversation, you can find a link to our Discord server down in the description. And while you're there, you could consider helping us out by picking up some of our merch, including a t-shirt like the ones you can see on screen. Finally, if you're feeling particularly generous, you could even consider backing us on Patreon. That's it for this one though, guys. I'm Dornay for Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next video.